Today's topic of discussion is corticosteroid. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shernaz Malik. Uh, we are going to discuss corticosteroid in three parts. In this part, we are going to discuss introductory part of the corticosteroid. In next two parts, we will discuss adverse drug reaction as well as uses of corticosteroids. So, what is corticosteroid? So, corticosteroid is the steroid which is released from the cortex of adrenal gland. So, adrenal gland having two parts, cortex and medulla. So, cortex is releasing steroidal hormone and medulla is releasing adrenaline and noradrenaline. So, this is the cross section of the adrenal gland which medulla this is the center part is the medulla which is releasing epinephrine and norepinephrine when cortex having three parts outer part is zona glomerulosa which secrete mineralocorticoid middle part is zona fasciculata which releases glucocorticoids and inner part is the zona reticularis which releases androgen Again, this is the section of the adrenal gland. Uh, inner part is the medulla which releases catecholamine and outer part is the cortex which is divided into three layers. Outer is the most outer is the zona glomerulosa which releases mineralocorticoid. Middle part is the zona fasciculata which releases glucocorticoid and zona reticularis which is releases androgen. Now, synthesis and release of corticosteroid by any stressor like physical stress, emotional stress, cold exposure or uh, any pain which stimulate hypothalamus and hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone. Now, corticotropin releasing hormone is stimulating, uh, stimulate anterior pituitary gland and uh, which anterior pituitary gland will secrete ad adrenocorticotropin hormone. Now, this adrenocorticotropin hormone will stimulate adrenal gland and adrenal gland will release corticosteroid. Now, this corticosteroid is present in the blood. Then, there is negative feedback mechanism is also available. So, presence of corticosteroid in the blood will affect on the anterior pituitary as well as hypothalamus to inhibit release of CRH and ACTH which inhibit the release of corticosteroid. So, this is the negative feedback mechanism. Now, this is the diurnal variation of the corticosteroid. So, corticosteroid is releases in the midnight or in the early morning. So, dose of the corticosteroid in the therapy should be decided according to the release of the corticosteroid. Again, this is the regulation of the corticosteroid any stress like physical, emotional, hypoglycemia, cold exposure or pain which activate hypothalamus and hypothalamus is releases CRH corticotropin releasing hormone and now this CRH will stimulate anterior pituitary gland and anterior pituitary gland will release adenocorticotropin hormone and this adenocorticotropin hormone is uh, act on the suprarenal gland and this suprarenal gland or adrenal cortex will release cortisone. This is the positive pathway. Now negative feedback pathway is the if corticosteroid is present in the blood then it will act on the anterior pituitary as a negative feedback and also into the hypothalamus and it inhibit the release of CRH and ACTH and ultimately inhibit the release of the corticosteroid. So, different uh, part of the cortex releases different hormones. So, first is the mineralocorticoid which is released from the glomerulosa and which regulate water as well as electrolyte. And hypersecretion of the mineralocorticoid causes primary hyperaldosteronism and deficiency of the mineralocorticoid causes addition stresses. Now, glucocorticoid is releases from the zona glomerulosa and which regulate carbohydrate, protein, fat metabolism and it act as anti-inflammatory as well as immunosuppressant in and anti-allergic substance. And hypersecretion of the glucocorticoid uh, causes Cushing syndrome 
and last one is the uh, aldosterone which is releases from the zona reticularis and hypersecretion causes adrenogenital syndrome. Now mechanism of action of the steroid. So first of all hormone enter into the cell of the target organ and this steroid is bind with the receptor, steroid receptor present in the cytoplasm and this steroid receptor complex is enter into the nucleus and which is bind with the specific site of the DNA and now this uh, this uh, will regulate the protein synthesis and response will occur. Now classification of the corticosteroids it is uh, divided according to the its duration of action. So first of all shorter acting glucocorticoids are act for the 8 to 12 hours and it is hydrocortisone intermediately acting uh, drug uh, corticosteroid act for the 12 to 36 hour and drugs are prednisolone, methylprednisolone, triamcinolone and deflazacord. These four are intermediately acting uh, corticosteroids. Longer acting corticosteroids are action is for 36 to 72 hours and drugs are betamethasone and dexamethasone and local acting corticosteroids are beclomethasone, budesonide, Fluticasone, cislesonide. These are the locally applied corticosteroids. Now, mineral corticoids are this oxycorticosterone assisted, fludrocortisone, and aldosterone. Now, topical steroid for the skin diseases are betamethasone, clobitazole, mometasone, fluticasone, budesonide, hydrocortisone and disonide. These all are topical steroid for the skin diseases. Now systemic activity of the corticosteroids are like the hydrocortisone having glucocorticoid activity is one. Uh, so what do you mean by glucocorticoid activity? Glucocorticoid activity is the anti-inflammatory as well as immunosuppressant activity of the corticosteroid. So hydrocortisone having one glucocorticoid activity and mineralocorticoid activity of the hydrocortisone is again one because it has uh, water and uh, salt retention activity is one. So uh, and dose of the hydrocortisone is 20. Now we can take as a uh, standard hydrocortisone take as a standard drug then uh, we can compare the other drug with the hydrocortisone. So prednisolone having glucocorticoid activity is 4 compared to hydrocortisone and mineralocorticoid activity is 0.8. So dose of the prednisolone is 5 milligram because it, it is 4 times more potent than the hydrocortisone and now methylprednisolone having glucocorticoid activity is 5, mineralocorticoid activity is 0.5 and dose of the methylprednisolone is 4 milligram. Dexamethasone having glucocorticoid activity is 30 and mineralocorticoid activity is 0. So there is no any kind of the water or the salt retention. So there is no edema or hypertension can occur due to dexamethasone and its, its dose is 0.75 milligram. Now betamethasone having uh, glucocorticoid activity is 30, mineralocorticoid activity is 0 and dose is 0.75 milligram. Now this oxycorticosterone acetate DOCA is glucocorticoid activity is 0 but mineralocorticoid activity is 100 because these both are mineralocorticoids and flu, uh, fludrocorticosterone uh, has uh, glucocorticoid activity is 10 and when mineralocorticoid activity is 125 milli, uh, 125. Now pharmacological action of the corticosteroids. So properties of corticosteroids are mineralocorticoids having sodium and water retention activity and uh, glucocorticoid having liver glycogen deposition. The two uh, action, uh, two actions of the mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid are not completely separated in naturally occurring corticosteroids. So they have mixed kind of the property like uh, corticosteroid, uh, glucocorticoid steroid having mineralocorticoid activity as well as mineralocorticoid having uh, glucocorticoid activity. But in synthetic preparation are available which 
uh, with the selective action. Now, uh, pharmacological action on the carbohydrate metabolism. So, in the carbohydrate metabolism, it stimulates glycogen deposition in the liver and gluconeogenesis formation of the glucose from other sources. So, it stimulate increase the deposition of the glucose, uh, glucose in liver and formation of the glucose from the other sources and it decreases peripheral utilization of glucose. So ultimately what happens? So glucose will increase in the blood. So it's, um, in result hyperglycemia occur, decrease tissue sensitivity to insulin and diabetes may exacerbate it. Now Effect of corticosteroid on the lipid meta metabolisms are it prolong you if the prolonged use of the corticosteroid causes a redistribution of the body fat that is deposited over the neck, face, and shoulder. Ulti ultimately, in result, moon face, this is the moon face, buffalo hum, this is the buffalo hum, face mouth, face mouth, and thinning of the limbs. So, redistribution of the fat from peripheral to central part and moon face, buffalo hump and face mouth can occur. Now, effect of corticosteroid on the lipid metabolism. Adipocyte in the trunk are more sensitive to insulin and lipogenesis can occur. In the limbs, lipolytic action of the growth hormone is predominant and facilitated by the, it is facilitated by the glucocorticoids. So, effect of corticosteroid on protein metabolism, it breaks down and mobilization of amino acid from lymphoid tissue, muscle, skin and bone. So, ultimately muscle vesting, lympholysis, thinning of skin, loss of bone matrix and growth retardation and wound healing and fibrosis are also inhibited. Effect of glucocorticoid on electrolyte and water metabolism. It uh, contain weak mineralocorticoid action. So, water retention promote potassium excretion. As a result, edema and hypertension except dexamethasone, betamethasone, tramcinolone and deflazacode. They are synthetic glucocorticoid they don't have any mineralocorticoid effect now action on the calcium metabolism so glucocorticoid act increase the renal excretion of the calcium and inhibit calcium absorption from gut so ultimately decrease blood calcium level now, effect of glucocorticoid on the bone. So, glucocorticoids stimulate osteoclast, which are bone desorption cell and which inhibit osteoblast, which are bone forming cell. So, ultimately, prolonged use may lead to osteoporosis and pathological fracture in vertebra and neck of the femur can occur. Now, Effect of glucocorticoid on the cardiovascular system. Sodium and water retention causes hypertension and worsening of congestive cardiac failure. Effect on the skeletal muscle. Muscle weakness and fatigue can occur in hypercorticism as well as hypocorticism. In hypercorticism, due to inadequate circulation of glucocorticoid causes weakness and fatigue of the muscle can occur. And hypercorticism, uh, hypokalemia uh, can occur and causes weakness and fatigue of the muscle can occur. So, corticosteroids are required for the normal function of the skeletal muscle. Weakness can occur in both hypo as well as hypercorticism. Prolonged use of corticosteroid may causes muscle wasting and steroid myopathy can occur. Now, effect on the central nervous system. There are two type of effect, direct, direct effect and indirect effect. So, direct effect are like uh, altered mood, irritability, psychosis, euphoria, insomnia and restlessness. 
when indirect effects are like uh, it depend on the blood pressure blood glucose level and electrolyte level so these all parameters are altered and it will, which are affect on the cns effect of the patient mm -hmm. effect of glucocorticoid on gastrointestinal tract so in gastrointestinal tract locally it uh local immune response against the h pylori infection is reduces and inhibit prostaglandin increase gastric secretion and pepsin secretion aggravate peptic ulcer so there are chances of h pylori as well as chances of peptic ulcer are aggravated now action on blood and lymph so glucocorticoid therapy decreases in number of circulating lymphocytes eosinophils basophil and monocytes it is due to redistribution of the cell and they have marked lympholytic action so they are used in lymphomas and leukemias anti inflammatory effect of the corticosteroids are like it is powerful anti inflammatory as well as an immunosuppressant effect uh, they prevent or suppress the clinical feature like the inflammation like redness heat pain and swelling it doesn't uh, affect on the progress of the disease it only control the clinical feature of the inflammation so they suppress the early phenomena like capillary permeability edema cellular infiltration and phagocytosis and late response like uh, capillary uh, proliferation collagen deposition Uh, fibroblastic activity and scar formation now anti inflammatory activity is like uh, it uh, uh, inhibit the prostaglandin as well as leukotriens and <coughs> by glucocorticoid stimulate or form the lipoprotein which is inhibiting phospholipase a2 enzyme and which inhibit the cascade or formation of prostaglandin and leukotriens so it inhibit the uh, inflammatory mediator like prostaglandin and leukotriens production of cytokinin like leukotriene 1 leukotriene 6 and tnf alpha are necessary for the initiation of the inflammation which is inhibited by corticosteroid chemotaxis is suppressed and inhibit expression of the various adhesion molecule on the endothelial cell it inhibited uh, inhibiting leukocyte migration into the site of injury and uh, anti inflammatory activity uh, is there so on the basis of anti inflammatory activity it is used in bronchial asthma acute gout and rheumatic fever so effect of corticosteroid on immune response is decreased by decreasing t lymphocyte decreasing lymphokinins and decrease cell mediated immunity and here it decreases b lymphocyte decrease immunoglobulin and decrease humoral immunity so ultimately it decreases uh, immune response so cell mediated responses are suppressed directly by inhibiting the production of cytokinin and including tnf alpha and interleukin they are used in organ transplant in autoimmune diseases and to suppress all type of hypersensitivity or allergic reactions thank you for watching the part 1 of the corticosteroid stay tuned for the part 2 where we will delve even deeper into the fascinating world of the corticosteroid thank you